Hi, and welcome to another course in the Mobile App Developer Academy. This course is entitled User-Centered Mobile Design. In today's tutorial, we will look at how to incorporate user-centered design into your mobile development process with a focus on the storyboarding phase. Easy-to-use mobile apps don't just happen. Often they are designed with a focus on the business goals, elaborate features or technological capabilities, but they often omit the most important part of the equation, the end user. User-centered design is a multidisciplinary approach that focuses on the potential users from the very beginning, ensuring each step of the way that these users like and are comfortable with the product. The user should not have to drastically change their behavior to use a new mobile app. Although the user-centered approach does take a small investment of time and money up front, it ultimately results in overall savings for a project and ensures user adoption. The result of employing UCD is a product that is more efficient, more satisfying, and more user-friendly, all these leading to increased sales, customer loyalty, and user adoption, while at the same time reducing development, training, and support costs. Utilizing UCT methods such as storyboarding also lets you explore more than one design approach than a creative mock-up or prototype allows. Since storyboards are so easy to create and change, you can create different versions, looking at the problem you're trying to solve from different angles, for different user groups, for different levels of expertise, or for different business objectives. The aim is to generate as many ideas as possible. Once you've established all the approaches, you can refine, discard, and combine them until you have that one that works the best. The UCD process is not just the responsibility of a designer or a user experience expert. It is something everybody on the project should participate in. This group effort also helps break the waterfall model of running projects, where each team member works in isolation, handing off work to the next person. Having the users and key stakeholders involved from the beginning can also significantly increase the quality of work. The client also gains a sense of ownership and engagement, ultimately investing them in the final project. A client who has seen a storyboard and has been given the opportunity to provide feedback is more likely to sign off on the final design. We're now going to look at each phase of the UCD process. The first step in any mobile project is to understand why the app is being built. As I mentioned earlier, UCD is a multidisciplinary process and encourages having all stakeholders involved from the beginning. Not only can they convey the primary purpose of building the app, they can also help you understand the business needs and goals, current processes, and any time or technical constraints that there may be. Once you understand the basic purpose of the app, it is time to understand who will be interacting with the app. So who is your primary audience? How many different user types are there? What is their job? What do they do all day? Why do they want or need a mobile app? Are there specific goals they're trying to reach or issues they hope to resolve by using a mobile app? How often will they use the app? Where will they use it? What device will they use to access the app? Understanding your users can help focus discussions and minimize any scope creep that could be based on personal opinion versus the goals of the user. For those familiar with the Agile process, this is a good time to create user stories. These capture what the users do or need to do as part of their job function quickly without having to create formalized requirements documents. Now that you know who your users are and what they want to accomplish with a mobile app, it is time to define the features that will make your app successful. Every item that goes on this list does not have to be incorporated into the final product. Once all the ideas are written down, you can go back through the list and organize like tasks and information together, throw out any that may be out of scope, that may have technical limitations, or that just don't fit the user's needs. This can then be qualified with other key stakeholders or executives, again to gain buy-in early in the process when it's easier to iterate and make changes. Often clients have preconceived notions that they want either a tablet or phone app. This decision should be reassessed after gaining a better understanding of the app's purpose, how and where it will be used, and even what devices the client has access to. Even though the next phases are just sketching rough concepts, it is important to know which device you're designing for so that you can make sure you're working in consistent proportions and the amount of information contained on each screen is relevant to the given screen size. 
There are also a number of differences between the visualizations and interactions available on tablets versus phones. Process flows usually start with a series of blank rectiles, one for each screen of the app, and then show the flow through each screen to accomplish primary tasks. At this point, you don't want to worry about specific controls or visualizations, but you do want to address the broad picture. What screens are needed, what is the purpose of each screen, and what content should be included. Next, you will determine navigation and decision flows between each screen. This is also the time you would define any alternate workflows or needs for the user to obtain more detailed information by opening an information window, rotating a screen to provide a different view of the data, or switching from graph to grid mode. Once you have determined the screens needed and their primary flow, it is now time to move on to the creation of the actual storyboard. Using a whiteboard can facilitate discussion and consensus on the outcome. Storyboarding can be simply thought of as a basic diagram of each screen contained in the app. It is important to remember that to create effective storyboards, it is not necessary to be a graphic designer. The objective is not to get the design right, but to know how the screens fit into the grander architecture, not from a technical, but from a functional and end-user perspective. Storyboarding allows you to talk about the bones of the app without getting distracted by style, color, or personality. Now is the time to make decisions about what the user's primary tasks are and how the app interface should work. It's easy to make changes at the storyboarding stage, less so after development has begun, so it's important to have stakeholder involvement and sign-off during this stage. Now that you know the primary function of each screen and how each one interacts with the others, you can start filling in the details of each screen. At this point in the process, you can start thinking about what controls and visualizations should be used. Again, the intent is not to do detailed graphic design, but these diagrams should provide just enough information to give a sense of how much space each element on the screen should have. After completing the necessary iterations, document the proposed storyboard and store it in a place accessible by all members of the development team. Depending on the nature of the project, documenting the storyboards may be as simple as capturing the sketches from the whiteboard with a camera. If the development is to be done by other resources, you may want to create a more formal requirements document with detailed wireframes that are easily consumable by those who may not have been involved in the storyboard process. Wireframes are the architectural blueprint of a mobile app, and much like storyboarding, they allow the interface and interaction of an app to be laid out without being distracted by graphical details. However, wireframes show more detail than a storyboard, such as exact visualizations or controls to be used, pixel placement of items on the screen, and usually include the requirements and features needed for each screen. Not all projects will include graphic design, but if yours does, this is a stage that color, font, type and size, imagery and icons are created. In this stage, you would apply a look and feel to your wireframes, usually based upon a set of brand guidelines already established by your client. If your client has defined brand guidelines or a corporate style guide, it is important to follow them closely to ensure consistency across all of the client's assets. Developing a mobile app is covered by other videos in this Mata series. But the important thing to remember during this phase is that whether you are doing the mobile development yourself or you're handing it off to other resources, stay involved. Just because the project is now in development doesn't mean that the UCD process is over. Questions will arise. You will need to ensure that the app is being built according to the specs you created. And you may even need to go back and forth to refine your design or add more details. Mobile development is an iterative process. And that's a wrap for this Mata course on user-centered mobile design.